the presentation of anarchism, anarchism a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. The emancipation. Anarchist Essays is brought to you by Loughborough University's Anarchism Research Group. For more information on the ARG, see the link in the show notes or follow us on Twitter at ARGLBORO. Anarchist Accounting by Anders Sandstrom. I have been an accountant in different capacities and in different organizations for more than 30 years. Until the late 1990s, I was a convinced neoliberal who supported and defended the increasing income differences, lower taxes, and deregulations that made up the policies of the day in Sweden and elsewhere in the, in the 80s and 90s. It was not until I was in my early 30s, after a sabbatical in Greece, that I finally changed my political views and became a critic of the capitalist market system. This rather radical change of heart marked the end of a long period of doubts and reflection regarding my political views. By that time, the libertarian version of socialism appeared most convincing to me, both on a philosophical and moral level, and the participatory economy model with its roots in libertarian socialism stood out as the most elaborate alternative economic vision. It was then, and still is today, one of very few alternative economic models that presents a coherent and detailed description of how a modern society can organize its economic affairs and undertakings in a democratic and fair way, both without private ownership of capital and above all without markets. Since returning from Greece in the year 2000, I have mostly been working in a very different type of organizations, such as the Swedish Syndicalist Trade Union and its associated unemployment office and the monthly syndicalist magazine Arbetaren. I have also been thinking a great deal about the accounting challenges that an alternative future anarchist society would face. This process eventually led me to write the book Anarchist Accounting that was published by Routledge in November 2020. The early radical left, including many anarchists and libertarian communists, for example followers of the Russian anarchist Peter Kropotkin, had a very negative attitude towards bookkeeping and accounting. Given that these activities were considered to be a significant part of the system that they wished to abolish. Their long-term vision of a future utopian society was a society without money or accounting, where debit and credit had been abolished, and society's collectively owned resources together with a limit, limited work effort could satisfy everyone's needs for goods and services without society having to make difficult decisions about what to produce and what to consume. The slogan, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs, was made popular by Karl Marx and was thought as the allocation principle in a future society, assuming an, an abundance of goods and services. The late 19th century French anarchist Ravachol summed up the sentiment when he said, there currently exist many useless things. Many occupations are useless as well, for example, accounting. With anarchy, there is no more need for money, no further need for bookkeeping and the other forms of employment that derives from this. Perhaps this negative attitude is not that surprising, considering the history of accounting. For sure, the development of financial accounting from the first simple notes of commercial transactions in antiquity until today's comprehensive systems for managing and controlling economic activity is the result of the needs of those in power and of capital owners and their focus on profit and return on their investment. The cradle of financial accounting is traditionally placed in Mesopotamia, in present Iraq, over 5,000 years ago. But it was not until the early Middle Ages that what is referred to as modern accounting was invented. The system of double entry bookkeeping first saw the light in city-states such as Florence and Venice in Italy 
in the 1200s, where bank customers were assigned accounts with both deposits and liabilities. Before the Industrial Revolution, the purpose of bookkeeping was mainly to register transactions between independent producers of goods and their customers, or traders who bought and sold goods, or between lenders and borrowers of funds. The actual production of goods was mostly carried out by independent peasants and artisans who controlled the actual production process. With the emergence of the Industrial Revolution, an entirely different scenario came into play. By the early 19th century, technical progress had made it possible to mass produce goods. Owners of capital invested much larger sums in production and it became important for them to control the production processes and the production units grew larger due to better and more efficient ways of communication and economies of scale. Investors began to evaluate and compare different units based on the most profitable use of resources. After the Second World War, and especially in the period after 1970, the world economy has been ch characterized by two strong trends. An increasing concentration of capital and an expanding financial sector. Many industries today are dominated by a small number of global and very large business groups that are often interlinked and whose revenues in many cases exceed the GDPs of smaller countries. At the same time, many companies today make signif significantly more money by speculating in currencies and securities than by producing goods and services and providing them to consumers. So to sum up the history of accounting, today's accounting systems emerged and were shaped by private capital owners and their interest in controlling and managing the use of their capital, by nation states and their interest in taxing the profits of corporations, and by demands from accountants who prepare financial information. So, do we really need accounting in a future democratic, libertarian socialist economy? Isn't accounting something that only makes sense in a capitalist economy with markets and private capital owners? The increase in productivity since the breakthrough of industrialism has tr truly been exceptional and there are indications that this development could very well continue. For example, with the help of advanced artificial intelligence and 3D printers. However, so far, the increased productivity has not led to fewer hours worked. On the contrary, hours worked per capita have increased Instead, the development has enabled a dramatically increased consumption, which, among other things, has had a very negative impact on the environment. There are certainly good reasons to believe that a future non-capitalist, democratic and fair economy, for which profit maximization and growth are not the primary goals, would give priority to leisure time in the form of reduced working hours instead of more consumption. There are also reasons to believe that such an economy will prioritize the production of durable, high-quality products instead of products that are designed to break and be, re and be replaced at short intervals. One can also expect that a larger share of the total consumption will be collective. For example, m more and better solutions for collective transport systems and housing arrangements and shared use of costly resources within neighborhoods. Such a development would not only have very positive effects on the quality of life and health of individuals, but is by now ne necessary to avoid the environmental catastrophe that is creeping ever closer. Our vital resources, such as clean air, the, a productive atmosphere, mineral deposits and ecosystems, are not endless but are nevertheless currently consumed at, at a rapid pace due to profit hunting. In short, there are great opportunities and convincing arguments for converting productivity increases into more leisure and more sustainable products instead of ever increasing consumption of short-lived products. It is, however, unlikely that we, at least in the near future, can create an economy of abundance 
in which we can meet all our needs and produce all the goods and services we want without any work effort or without consuming neither non-renewable natural resources nor manufactured productive resources. It is, therefore, unlikely that we will be able to satisfy our demand for goods and services without having to prioritize what, it, what is to be produced and consumed. As long as our productive resources are limited, and as long as the production of goods and services consumes scarce resources, every economy, it doesn't matter if it's capitalist, communist, anarchist, participatory or something else, will need to prioritize what it wants to produce and consume and decide how to allocate resources and consumption rights between individual producers and consumers. Different societies will make different decisions, of course, and they will definitely go about making decisions very differently, depending on their values and goals. But they all, by necessity, need to choose some alternatives over others. In other words, since resources are finite, there will be an opportunity cost associated with every use of a resource. The use of a resource for a specific purpose means sacrificing other possible uses. For example, if an economy chooses to use its productive resources to produce cars, that means that the same resources, such as labor, machines, tools, land, cannot be used to produce other items like wind turbines, food, clothes. And in order to make fair and efficient decisions when choosing between different possible alternative uses, that is, making decisions that promote society's goals without wasting resources, decision makers, whomever they may be, will need to have access to information about opportunity costs for different available options. And the purpose of accounting is to provide this. Without this information, there is no way for decision makers to make fair and efficient decisions, regardless of how well intended they may be. It is important to understand that there will always be someone making these decisions. If the affected consumers and producers are not allowed to influence the production and consumption plans, someone else will decide what is to produce and consume. Either as in a market economy, the individual buyers and sellers that are directly involved in a transaction will make decisions regardless of the effects on others. Or, alternatively, as in a centrally planned economy, some central planning bureau will try to estimate preferences and costs and prepare production plans. Note furthermore, that costs and prices will not necessarily be the same in different types of economies. In a private market economy, the prices that individual buyers and sellers negotiate will not include costs that other affected parties will be burdened with, for instance, the damage to society caused by pollution. Whereas in a planned economy that aims for prices to reflect true social costs, these costs could be included in the price. Accounting can be defined as the registration, summarization and reporting of economic transactions in order to provide the necessary information for making and evaluating economic decisions. Economic transactions, of course, can refer to both planned and actual transactions. And surely more information is better than less, everything else being equal. A libertarian socialist economy will obviously have very different values and institutions compared to a capitalist or state socialist economy regarding ownership, decision making, allocation, income distribution and ecological sustainability. But if such an, a future economy is to be democratic, fair and efficient, it has to implement some kind of accounting system that reflects these values and that summarizes and presents the re the required information to all decision makers in the economy, which means all affected parties, in a transparent and accessible way. If it fails to do so, it will eventually, by necessity, revert into some version of the authoritarian economic system that it wants to transcend. 
Finally, I want to say a few words about the need for vision and also addressing some anarchist concerns in this regard. A truly fair and democratic economy aiming for long-term stability needs to abolish the sources of hierarchical decision-making routines, the concentration of power and unfair income distribution, and replace the defining institutions of capitalism with democratic and fair alternatives. But people have a right to be skeptical of alternative economic visions in light of the 20th century history. Therefore, our visions of a new economic system and a just society must provide a trustworthy alternative to both capitalism and 20th century state socialism. We who want a different society must become much better at presenting and defending our visions. At the same time, we need to admit that there is a risk that detailed visions can promote sectarianism and elitism. And to avoid this, and to ensure the right of future generations to make their own decisions, our visions must be flexible, inclusive, and allow continuous adaptation to new information and to a changing world. Having said that, thinking through economic vision, including accounting issues, in a serious and concrete way, provides at least three diff different and important benefits. It builds optimism and confidence in the feasibility of a more desirable e alternative system. It helps to assess alternative strategic and tactical actions in our everyday struggles. And finally, it helps to inform experiments when people are in a position to begin implementing alternative social institutions. So as long as visions are presented as merely proposals or suggestions and not as ideologically rigid dogmas, thinking through potential problems and exploring possible solutions in advance can only be of help to future citizens who ultimately will decide how to organize their new society. Thank you for listening. To help others find Anarchist Essays, please rate and review us wherever you find your podcasts. And if you're interested in anarchist ideas, why not check out the journal Anarchist Studies? For over 20 years, Anarchist Studies has been publishing original research on the history, theory, and practice of anarchism. For more information, visit www.lwbooks.co.uk forward slash anarchist studies.